Hi, I'm Sean Warren with Sean Warren Fine Art and Painting with Peaks. And today I'm going to review um, this new set of watercolors that I've received. It's the Magello Mission Pure Pigment 24 Color Watercolor Set. I want to let you know that I'm not paid by the company. I received no sponsorship and I purchased the watercolors with my own money. The opinions in this video are purely my own opinions and I urge you and encourage you um, to research the product yourself and make sure that you're making um, the right purchase for yourself. I purchased um, the Magello Pure Pigment set of 24 colors. I wanted the Pure Pigment set because I wanted to be able to mix pure pigments together to get um, predictable results with my mixtures. If you use a hue, you don't always get a predictable uh, color when you mix them together. Sometimes they can be muddy, so that was why I wanted to buy the Pure Pigment set. But I went ahead a few days ago, I um, put the paint into my palette, and this is my palette. I used two of these, and this is the, um, the Magello palette and it has a rubber gasket in it so it seals and I have two of these and I went ahead and I put all the colors in. It has mixtures for the colors on the little card that comes with it. So I didn't just put in um, the 24 colors that it comes in but I went ahead and I followed the instructions and I laid it out a little bit differently but it has um, mixtures for more colors too. So you get, um, it says 51 colors. It's actually not 51 colors. I don't know why, but several places they have um, skipped numbers. So I'm, the numbering is off, but anyway, regardless, um, I, did, I did put 48 colors into the palette. So one of the first things that I noticed when I opened up the paints was that there are two information cards. One of the cards, and it has Korean right here, is not totally translated into English. Part of it's in Korean, so you want to get rid of this and don't use that. You want to use the one that says Mission Gold Class Pure Pigment Set, and this one is completely translated into English. Um, it gives you, these are the basic 26 colors that come in my set, and then it gives you um, new 28 colors created by mixing colors together. So today when I do the swatches, I'm only going to do the basic, I'm going to do 24 colors, I'm not going to do Chinese white or ivory black, and I'm not going to do all of the new colors created by mixing more than one color. So um, it also gives you light fast information um, down at the bottom. So all of the paints in my set are extremely light fast or good light fast. They're either a four or five star. It tells you about the transparency and the staining properties. And it also gives you, in little tiny uh, type, it tells you the pigments, um, the pigment names there. And those are um, normal pig pigment names that are the industry standard. So you can look at that and know right off um, what, kind of, what pigment you're using. So. so I laid mine out on two trays, two palettes. I bought the um, Mission palette to go along with it. It, it came with a free... Um, insert but not the case or the lid. So I bought an additional one and um, put them in the palette um, and you can see that I some of them are mixtures. I put these in about two days ago and they're still quite liquid. Um, I was going to wait for them to dry but honestly I was really anxious to use them and I wanted to um, swatch them out and, and see what their properties were uh, for myself. So the first thing that I did is I made on my computer, I made a little diagram of where all the colors go. And it's really tiny, and I'm not going to paint directly on this, but this just gives me a little diagram when I laid it out. Since I didn't lay it out exactly like the, the instructions, um, it just gave me kind of a road map so I know where things go. And then I took a piece of watercolor paper. This is the kind that I normally use. Um, this is Fabriano Artistico and I think it's 300 weight, so I wanted to go ahead and use the real paper that I would paint on um, so that I could really understand the way it's going to behave. And then I'm using water brushes, and I have some water in my cup, so 
uh, let's get started. So the first paint is lemon yellow. And I'm going to start out by um, wetting my paper first. I want to see how it disperses wet and wet. zoom in so you can see a little better what I'm doing. So what I am noticing is that it doesn't seem to run in, doesn't seem to disperse that well. It's not like totally bleeding into the color as I go down the paper. So let's see, I'm going to put some, a little more water right here and see how it works if I go It's very, very strongly pigmented. So it, do, it does gradate somewhat, but uh, maybe not as well as what I would hope for. So let's try the permanent yellow light. So I'll get some water on my paper. I'm going to go ahead and put water all the way down on here. So it's pretty much, it's not really moving much. In order to get it to move, I have to keep blending it with my brush. Okay, the next color is uh, Permanent Yellow Deep. I didn't wet my paper first on this one. I just dipped it and I have a water brush so I'm squeezing water as I go. And I've stopped squeezing the water now. I'm just continuing down the paper. And my table is a little bit it's not totally level. It, it, is, it is sloped a little bit towards me. So you can see there's some water pooling there a little bit. Okay, this one, I'll, let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and go over where I've written the name to so we can see how transparent it is. I should have done that with the other two as well, but I did not. Okay, I'm wiping the brush off. I'm not squeezing the brush. So the next color um, is red-orange. I'm going to put a little less color on than I did the other ones to see if it will bleed in there by itself. So it is a little bit, you can see how it's bleeding down a little bit. We'll let that one sit and come back to it and see how it does after it sat for a few minutes. Okay, so my next color um, is Scarlet Lake. And again, pre-wetting. Oh, I forgot to forgot to go over that with my red orange to see how transparent it was. So Scarlet Lake. Seems to be dispersing a little better than the orange. Okay, uh, my next color is Permanent Red Deep.
So I don't, I don't think I would have a problem with this. Um, just realize that you, you are going to have to kind of work it with the brush a little bit. If you had, if you had a big um, background that you're trying to do a wash on and then put bits of color in here and there, you might have some problems with that since it doesn't want to run together real well. Um, let's try the permanent red deep. I'll go through these and then I'll, I'll do a couple where we mix more than one color together and see how they bleed together. Okay, so permanent red deep. I'm sorry, we already did permanent red, permanent red deep. Okay, right here. A little goes a really, really long way. And they are still wet, uh, just keep that in mind. Let's pop in a little yellow. Um, I want to see how it mixes with another color. So not a whole lot. Let me put some actually right in there. Okay, let's try cherry red. I'm using the Pentel water pen. And I like this pen, it has a valve in it, so it's easy to control the flow of water. Didn't print very much on that one. Let's see, cherry red, make sure I get the right one. There wasn't room to label these on my palette, so I'm having to uh, reference my little computer printout. That permanent red deep is very, very pigmented. So this is Indian red next. And I'm just going to go through these rather quickly. Indian red seems to be spreading pretty good. Crimson Lake. Crimson Lake, where are you? Right here. Oh, that's a pretty color. Permanent rose. So some of the some of the colors disperse well. Oh, these are actually running together nicely now. And permanent magenta. There's a lot of reds in this set. Um, a lot more reds than are blues. I'm not quite sure why. Permanent magenta. At first I was a little concerned about it, but after I went through and mixed up the additional 28 colors, um, there are plenty of greens and earth tones 
um, in the multicolor mixtures. Cerulean blue. Oh, cerulean blue is very pigmented. <laughs> And I'm washing, I'm washing my brush off in my water cup in between Prussian blue. Prussian blue is usually a very staining color. It's usually very bright, vibrant, so I didn't put quite as much on the brush. Oh, look at that one. That one runs beautifully. Let me pop a little more on there. Better dab this. I, I probably got quite a bit of water on this one too, which may be why it's it's running dispersing so well. Okay, now we have cobalt blue, and this isn't actual cobalt blue pigment, so I'm curious it is, um, PB28. There are no non-toxic ingredients used in here, so they wouldn't be using a real cobalt or your real CADS. Um, but it is a, si a single pigment still. Cobalt number two, let's see, where are you? Cobalt number two, right here. Okay, this is not nearly as pigmented as the other blues, is what I'm noticing. Okay, then we have ultramarine light. And this is a paint that I would expect to granulate. do not see granulation in this. Looks like there's some granulation in the cerulean blue. So I have not tried this, but I did in my research discover that if you put a little bit of Epsom salts, in with your your water that you will get the granulation so I may give that a try I don't have any Epsom salts in the house right now but I will I will let you know how that one turns out okay so the next color is Viridian and I think we're gonna have to go to our second palette for that yep so put this guy away And this one doesn't have a lid or a container yet. Um, it's it's been ordered. This is the um, box that comes free with the set. Let me move this up so you can see it. Okay, so Viridian. My paper's dry. <laughs> Rewet my paper a little bit. Some of these are definitely more pigmented than others. The Spiridion does not seem to be super strong. And then we have Bamboo.
Viridian is generally not a color that I would use on its own. Uh, but there, like I said, there are several, several green mixtures in here that I would use. So bamboo, bamboo is right here. This is not super pigmented. It's a little drier than the rest of them too. Some of them are thicker. Um, they, they are pretty liquid, I will say that. They're fairly liquid. So they, um, the binders they use are all natural. They're, it's made with honey and um, some, pig, or some binders that come from fruit, um, gum arabic. So we have yellow ochre next. Yellow ochre. There we go. Yellow ochre. The yellow ochre is setting up pretty good. It's got a film on top of it, which I would expect because it's, it's a thick, opaque color. And then we have this color. Oh, I didn't wash my brush out very good. That's because that yellow ochre is it's so thick, it's sticking in the bristles of the brush. Okay, let's just dab that off. Okay. Okay, so this is the green gold. It's a nice earth tone. So it's like a yellow ochre with more yellow in it. I would call that a yellow gold more than a green gold, but that's just me. And then we have red brown. It's thickening up quite a bit also. And then lastly, we have Van Dyke Brown. Yeah, these browns are pretty thick. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot to get my water going first. So let's go back and look at some of these. I'm going to dab a little, there's puddling, a little puddling going on at the bottom here. I'm going to dab some of these and let's look and see how they dispersed. So yeah, there is some dispersion. The ones that I didn't work as much, not so much. Um, the Indian Red dispersed well. Crimson Lake, nah. Permanent Rose did okay. Uh, let me try a few, since I have this open spot and for whatever reason I didn't have Perylene Maroon on my palette, let's just try to do a little experimenting in, in that spot. So I'm going to put a few colors together. I got a new water brush with more water in it here. Okay, let's, um, actually I'm going to use the other palette. These are more earth tones on this palette. So let's try like a blue and a violet. There was quite a bit of water there, so it did run together quite, 
quite well. They're not really running together that well. They ran, you know, it ran down here where there was more water, but it's not really running together. So I, I can see that you're probably going to have to give your brush, you're going to have to work this stuff with your brush. So you might not get some of the beautiful blooming effects that you would like to get when you're doing large washes or, you know, trying to purposely create blooms. But they are beautiful colors. They're very strong colors. Um, a little goes a long way. And I'm real curious to find out what happens once I put uh, the Epsom salts in. I'm looking at these again, and there is some granulation a little bit in the blues. There is the cobalt, the ultramarine. I see a little bit, it looks like in the Prussian blue. Not a lot though. So, anyway, I'll wait for these to dry and I'll uh, follow up with this once they've dried so you can have a look, with, look at them um, after they've been allowed to dry naturally. Okay, we'll check back with you in a few minutes. Hi, welcome back. Uh, my swatch sheet is now dry and I wanted to zoom in and kind of let you look at it. Um, it is a little more dispersed uh, than it was when I, when it was wet, but still I would say that it's not dispersing maybe as well as what I might like. And to compare, I decided to do a comparison. So <clears throat> I'm going to do a couple of things. First of all, I'm going to compare it um, with some paints that are similar, would be a similar quality. Um, the Daniel Smith, I'm going to try that, and I'm going to try um, the M. Graham. The M. Graham is made with honey, so it would be, I feel, comparable um, to uh, the Magello paint. I, I got Ultramarine Blue, which is um, known to be a paint that um, granulates well. Unfortunately, in the Daniel Smith color, they didn't have an ultramarine blue. So I got Rose of Ultramarine instead. I just bought these at our local art supply. So um, according to the information sheet, um, the Rose of Ultramarine also is a granulating pigment. So I'm going to give these a try and see how they compare um, with my Mission Gold paints. <coughs> and then I'm also going to try um, adding some Epsom salt um, to my water, just a little bit to it when I use my Mission Gold paints. Um, from what I can tell, the research I've done, if you add just a pinch of Epsom salt to your brush water, um, it will cause your paints to granulate. I also bought some granulation medium, Windsor and Newton granulation medium, and I'm going to try that um, with the Mission watercolors as well. So. Let's get started and see what happens. Let's start out with the M. Graham. This is the M. Graham Ultramarine. And let me get my tube of Mission Ultramarine also. Okay. This is the M. Graham. All right. <coughs> so you can see that, <coughs> excuse me, that is dispersing quite well. And I'll do a close up on it in a minute, but it is also granulating quite well. It's hard for me to tell in here how much water I'm actually getting on the paper. I'm trying to get the same amount on there. Okay, this is the Mission Gold paint.
So they did disperse. They disperse differently. They definitely are very different. I'm going to try one more time with the mission, just because that looks so strange. It's um, the texture of it is just so different uh, from the M. Graham paint. I want to try that one more time. Yeah, it definitely is not distributing as well or dispersing quite as well. I, I can say I, I prefer the M. Graham. I'm just not very happy uh, with the way that this is, has flowed or not flowed. Okay, so let's try the Daniel Smith. This is Rose of Ultramarine. I suppose it depends on what kind of control you like to have with your paint. Um, if you're a tighter painter and you like to, I would say, have more detail, then I would say that the Mission Gold paint would be a better choice. Um, if you're more into the blooming effect and like your paint really to disperse, I would um, go with either the M. Graham or the Daniel Smith. That's my vote on it. This one um, also, the uh, Rose Ultramarine has nice granulation. And I'm seeing a little bit of gran granulation um, on the mission, but not very much. And you can really, it's kind of weird here, you can see the texture of the paper more. It's like um, little rivers in the paper. This, you're not seeing that in there as much, or at all. It's really, it's a lot smoother. Okay, so let's try it. Let's try the mission paint, the mission gold paint. Let's try it with the granulation medium and see what happens. So um, the, the directions say to use this, ooh, that smells, ooh, pretty fragrant. Uh, it says to use it instead of water. So you wouldn't want to dilute that with water at all. Um, I'm wondering if I shouldn't just use, I think I'm just going to use a regular paintbrush with this rather than the water brush since it says not to use it in water. So let me go grab another breath. So I'm putting down my water. Grabbing a little of the Mission Gold and letting it do its thing. Let me try that again with a little more of the medium. See, I just think that's strange how it doesn't pull down into the water. Okay, I'm going to do a zoom in so you can see what it looks like. It's not granulating a whole lot more. It is, a, yeah, I, I, get, I suppose it is. Okay, so these two on the bottom right here, these two are um, using the Windsor Newton granulation medium have some water right here in a little dish and I'm just going to put maybe a half a teaspoon in there. I'm just going to take my fingers and give it a pinch. A pretty generous pinch I might say. Okay. Okay, so this is using Epsom salts, which is um, magnesium sulfate. It's dispersing very slowly. <laughs> Let me try putting a little more in. Okay, that's what we're here for is to experiment, right? 
I'm going to put two very generous pinches. I would say I have about a teaspoon and a half Epsom salt right now, and I would say I probably have a third cup of water. And I haven't been able to find really any any recipes or any recommendations on ratios of Epsom salt to water. I suppose it just depends on the amount of granulation that you want. Okay, let's give this a try again. Get this nice and wet so it has every opportunity to disperse and flow that I can give it. Okay, do your thing. <laughs> I'm going to help it a little even. I'm going to tip it up a little bit and just help it a little bit so I can see because it's hard when it's it's real um, saturated and concentrated. It's, it's hard to see whether it's granulating or not. It sure is, especially this one. Hi, in wrapping up my review, I'd like to briefly mention the things that I liked about the paints and the things that I didn't like about them. The very first thing that I loved was the price. I did look and I paid $98 for it on Amazon. I had free shipping and I received it three weeks before the expected delivery date and it was shipped from Korea. So that was great. Um, this is my first time buying professional watercolor paints and I wasn't quite ready to go up, you know, with a Daniel Smith or an M. Graham price. So it was a, it's a good way for me to get some quality paints at a price I could afford. The other thing that I really like is that I think the colors are beautiful. Um, it, they're very pigmented and they're very light fast. At least in the set that I received, everything was either an excellent or very good light fast rating. So that's what I liked about it. I liked that it had the recipes for mis mixing additional colors so that I'm able to create, you know, all the colors of the landscape that I would use. So I like that about it. So what I didn't like about the paint, and really the only, only thing that I really feel strongly about is the way that it flows or doesn't flow with the water. So I thought that was a little strange. It just doesn't you know, disperse and, and, and do pretty things in the water. So um, for me, that's not probably as bad of an issue as it is for a more experienced watercolors. I come from, from an oil painting background, and so I'm used to having a lot of control over the paint. So for me at this stage, I think that that's something that I can live with and work with, and it's not going to bother me quite as much as it might somebody that's used to getting a lot of cool effects um, by dropping the paint and mixing paint um, randomly. So if you like control, if you like detail, this is a good paint for you. Otherwise, it's probably not going to be a good paint for you and it's going to frustrate you. Um, the granulation, I actually was able to overcome the lack of granulation by adding the Epsom salts and that would be my choice as far as a granulating medium because of the, it's very inexpensive and you can regulate the amount that you put into it um, you can regulate the amount of granulation you have just by adding more or less. So I really like that part about it. Um, so really, I give the, the paint a high rating. I was pleased with it overall for the price. So moving forward, as I become a better um, watercolor painter and as I run out of my Mission Gold paints, my plan is to buy and to replace um, them with the M. Graham colors. I really love those. The little tube that I got and, and tested, I was very happy with. I even preferred it over the Daniel Smith. So that's what I'll be doing in the future. Um, I recommend these paints for someone that likes detail work and likes a little more control over the paint. I also think that this will be good for me um, to be able to use a different brand of paint on some of the areas that I really want it to blossom, bloom, and flower, whatever you call that. Um, it would be good for a background, I would say, and then um, use some of the Mission Gold paint for the finer areas where you want more control. So there's you know, still place a place for it um, in my technique, and I'm, I was very happy with it overall. So I hope this was helpful for you. 
and I hope you'll um, buy a sample tube. I, I recommend you buy a sample tube before you buy the whole set. That way you can give it a try and see if you like it. So um, happy painting and we'll see you next time. Good night. Thanks for watching today. Please visit SeanWarrenFineArt.com or any of these social media sites. I've also included my contact information in the links below. I'll be adding new video weekly, so please subscribe to my channel so you'll be sure not to miss a thing.